Amen. God bless you, man. You are very graceful. God bless you, Reza. And God bless all other members of this team. We praise team in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to come back to prayer. And this may be the only prayer we will pray tonight. Because I will be spending more time to open our eyes to some mysteries and some truths tonight. And that's why we have to pray this prayer very well. If the Lord allows us, we still pray it again and more of them. Otherwise, it may be the only prayer tonight. I want to ask God, Father, let your light shine into my life tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your light shine into my life tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Let your light shine into my life tonight. Let your light shine into my life tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. From now henceforth, let my light be ordered by your light. No, my mother is sitting here, my brother. Let your light shine into my life tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your light shine into my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your light shine, Father, into my life, into my situations, into my entire being, into my family, into everything that make me who I am. Let your light shine into my life tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your light shine, Father. Only the living are ordered by your light. And no one is alive until the light of God in Jesus Christ shine upon him. Only the living are alive. Only the living can be ordered by your light. Only the living can be ordered by your light. And I am not alive until your light in Christ Jesus shine into my life. Now let your light shine into my light tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. The dead are gone. You can't shine light on them. Only the living can be ordered by your light. Lord, and I am not alive until the light of God sees me. Let your light shine to my light tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your light shine to my light tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Only the living are ordered by light. Light ordered the living. And a just life need the light of God's presence. Lord, in every way, in any form, that you know I need your presence. In every way, in any form, you know I need the light of your presence. Tonight, Lord, let your light shine upon me. Let your light shine upon me. Let your light shine upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your light shine upon me. Have mercy upon me. O Lord, turn my life in my name. Let my life be ordered by your light. Let my life, Father, tonight be ordered by your light. And from this point onward, from today onward, from today henceforth, in my life, let it be said of me that this man or this woman is ordered by God's light. Let that be my story in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be the story of everything that, that is about me, my children, my spouse, my life, my family, my head. Let your light shine in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, cause me to be alive by the reason of your light tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Make me to be alive by the reason of your light tonight in Jesus' mighty name. It's only those that have the light of God in Christ Jesus shining to their life are alive. Lord, let the light of God in Christ Jesus, let that light that shine in darkness, that light that darkness couldn't hold. The Bible says in him is life. 
and the life is the light of men, and the light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot just understand it, can't hold it. Let your light shine in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. In every precarious situation, in every situation where I know there is need for orderliness, in every situation where I know there is need for God to intervene, in every institution where I know for God, if you don't intervene, my life will be disjointed, be disordered. Lord, tonight, let your light shine in the mighty name of Jesus. That's all I ask for tonight, Lord. Let your light shine. When the world was, the earth was void and there is nothing good in it, the Bible says, God said, let there be light and all darkness set into place. Lord, tonight, is there anywhere my life is void? Is there any area my life is empty? Is any part of my family, my children, where I know myself, things are disjointed, the patterns are not good. What is happening, I don't like it. But I can't help it unless you turn your face towards me and shine forth your light tonight. Let your light shine in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your light shine in the mighty name of Jesus. That is all I ask for tonight. If you shine forth your life, my son will be healed. If you shine forth your life, my daughter will be healed. If you shine forth your life, even myself, I will be alive and healthy and healthy. If you shine forth your life, everything about me will turn to miracle. If you shine forth your life about me, even my spiritual life will make sense. Serving God for me will make sense. Living in the life and the light of God for me will make sense. If only I can have your light. Shine forth your light in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible said in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and yet the earth was dark and void, until you said, let there be light. If you abandon me, I will just stay there, a created being, useless. Lord, let your light shine to my life. Declare for me and say, let there be light. For me tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, in every matter about me, in every situation about me, in everything that concerns my children, each and every one of them, things I know and things I don't know, Things I can understand and things I cannot even understand. Things beyond my wildest imagination. Things beyond my understanding. Let your light shine for that in the mighty name of Jesus. I can only see as far as my nose. I can only see as far my eyes can my eyes can go. But you can see both living and the dead. You can see both in the dark and the open. You can see the secrets. You can see visible and invisible. There is nothing hidden before you. You know me before I know myself. Therefore, let your light shine for that. In the mighty name of Jesus, open my eyes and let your light shine upon me. In Jesus' mighty name, let your light shine. In the mighty name of Jesus, until you do that, my life will remain void and empty. My life will remain void and empty. Until you do that, my life will remain void and empty. Don't allow darkness to have a hiding place in me. Don't allow darkness to have a hiding place in my home. Don't allow darkness to have a hiding place in my family. Don't allow darkness to have a hiding place in my soul, in my spirit, in my body. Don't molest my enemy. Let your light shine, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Lord, that's all we ask for tonight. As we discuss the word now, open our eyes. Open our eyes, please. Open our eyes, please. And let your light shine to our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, that's all I ask for tonight in every life. For everyone hearing me now, on, on, on every situation, on every matter, on every case. Now, at this point, concerning a son, concerning a daughter, concerning a husband, concerning a wife, <coughs> concerning a family, concerning a life, concerning our very being, in every case, in any matter. The Bible says you made the heaven and the earth, yet the earth was void. Until you declare, let there be light. Lord, tonight, if you don't declare light into our life, we remain void. If you don't declare light into our being, we remain empty. If you don't declare light into our life, the devil will use our life as like a football, toast to and fro, anywhere he likes. But immediately you sent forth your light. The Bible says that there was light, and there was light, and all darkness was restored to a confused world, to a confused heart. Lord, tonight, I declare in the mighty name of Jesus to every here and to every life, and to every family, and to everyone hearing me, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by his own righteousness alone, and by his mind, the Bible says, if you ask anything of you according to your will, it is your will that they let the light shine. It is your will that in him is life. 
and his life is our light. And by that light, we have our own life, full and abundant. The Bible says the enemy has come to kill, to this, to destroy, and to this, and, and to waste away. But the Bible says he has come to give life, and that he may give it in abundance. To none that life in Jesus Christ, it is your will. And you say, if you ask anything according to your will, this is the confidence we have in you, that you hear us. Lord, now because I know you are hearing now. And thank you because you have heard in the past, and you will see here now, and you are hearing now. Lord, therefore, I pray for everyone, and for every life, and for every family, and everywhere this sun is going to, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, let there be light in Jesus' mighty name. Shine forth your light. Shine forth your light. Shine forth your light into every darkness. Shine forth your light. Jackie Mola Kyoto, in the mighty name of Jesus. Jackie Mola Kyoto, in the mighty name of Jesus. Jackie Mola Kyowa, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be light in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Welcome to tonight's meeting. God bless you. I'll be speaking more of the time. If Lord permit me, I will still pray for you or ask you to pray. But please follow me. In the course of these four days, I have prayed for you and I have helped you to pray some very vital prayers. And tonight in particular, if there's any prayer we have prayed, this won't just pray tonight, make a lot of sense to what we have been doing the past four days. And if I've led you that far, if I also do not lead you to this understanding that God is bringing my way, I will not be doing you too much good. Because um, the understanding we have tonight will lead us to the form of the victory that we ought to have. There are times we need to order our own life ourselves. As in command our own life ourselves, say, my life be in order. Let there be light. And this understanding is what will bring us the victory that we desire. We have victory physical in all our prayers. But the spirit, the victory will not be permanent where there are no spiritual victory. And spiritual victory comes by understandings. Spiritual understandings. That is what begs spiritual, spiritual victories. And where there are spiritual victory and there is physical victory as we are praying, our heads. Me standing here tonight, at the first day I couldn't even talk. I couldn't talk as I should be. I was practically down. The second day I was sitting down while I was ministering. But here, me standing, I wish you can see me standing healthy before you tonight. It shows personally I have received light. And I know you too, you are receiving light in the mighty name of Jesus. I say you have received light in Jesus' mighty name. And the light shall be permanent in Jesus' mighty name. Those are physical victory. But this victory will not be permanent where there are no spiritual victory. To back it up, man is both physical and spiritual. And visual spiritually come by understanding of spiritual things. What happened in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3? We need to understand it. It was a good level that the Lord has opened my eyes to it. I told you yesterday that when God said that be light, there are millions of things in his mind. And God has opened my eyes to a sort a small part of it. And I'm to share that with you tonight. Every part of the word of God agree in perfect union and in order. Tonight I'm discussing with you light bring orderliness. Light bring orderliness, and every living are ordered by light. Light bring orderliness. If you are light, then you will be ordered by his light. Say, I am alive in the mighty name of Jesus. Say for yourself, I am alive in the mighty name of Jesus. And from now, my life be ordered by his light in the mighty name of Jesus. I for now, I declare for me and my family and my household and everything that matters to me, my family that is disjointed, I declare, let there be orderliness now in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever you discover there is orderliness in it, after this to this uh, administration, you should be able to cut things to order. And God will respect your voice because you say, let there be light. Everything God will agree to this. In Genesis 1, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, mind you, the heaven and the earth have been created even before we are introduced to them. The heaven and the earth were not created in seven days. That's the mistake we have made in our secondary school or in CROK distance. The heaven and the earth are not created in seven days. They have been created before we, we are, they were introduced to us. 
and Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1, it says, and God finished creating the heavens, there are many, there are about three of them, and plenty of things that God created, and the earth. But when God has finished created the heavens and the earth, he looked to the earth specifically. He looked down upon the earth specifically and he discovered that the earth he has created was void, was empty, was without order. The heavens are ordered by God by his light. God reigns in light. No man has ever seen him, not even angel. They only saw that deep, that deep, that mighty light emanating from his throne. God is light. And therefore, the heavens is ruled by his light. There's orderliness in heaven because God, who is the light, reigns in heaven. But on earth, where his light was not shining, there was void, there was emptiness. And there was no orderliness. Everything was confused. And the first thing that God did was that he said in verse 3, let there be light. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, and there was light. It's by this light that God created all that we see today on earth in seven days. Order, in other words, God ordered and reordered the earth in seven days. He had created the earth. The earth was void and empty. The earth was not created in seven days. The earth has already been created. But it was it was it was disjointed and and, uh, and and confused and God said let there be light and by that light he began to set things in order and he spent seven days in setting everything that needed to be on earth in place including me and you so but thank God now got to the sixth day he said let us make man in our own image then he created man a physical being flesh and that thing he created, that was the first time God will be having woman as we are. Was not not as even as we were, we will have human a flesh created directly by himself. It was a dead being, just created him, empty thing, dead on ground. No wonder the Bible says that in Romans 8, verse 8, that nothing of the flesh can please God. Because man is made of flesh, is physical. And after making man in his flesh, then he introduced something for himself. God is spirit. And spirit and cannot relate with, uh, with the flesh he has created. It's not his heart. It's useless to him. And the next thing he did is to breathe into him. He brought something of himself and put into man. And the Bible says man became a living soul. He became a tripartite being, a thing in person. His flesh, then God add something of Himself, which is His spirit, and breathe into Him, making Him to have a spirit. Number one is a flesh. Number two, He brought something to Him to make Him a spirit, and to a part of Himself, which is His spirit, into Him. And immediately that spirit entered into Him. A new, different thing now emerged from the dead flesh. That's why the flesh is always dead. You can't please God. Now, the flesh. The Spirit of God entered to that flesh, and the flesh become a living soul. Now, God relates with that living soul. No wonder Jesus Christ says, and no man has three parts now, flesh, spirit, and soul. And no wonder Jesus Christ says that man, if he walk and a man gain, that by gaining the whole world, satisfy himself in the flesh, but lose his own soul. We simply mean, it is the soul that God will eventually judge or save. And today, as we are talking now, there is no sin that may be safe spirits. Please listen. I'll be putting some things to this thing as you just open our eyes to many things tonight. So listen carefully. Carefully, there may be safe spirits in paradise or condemned spirits in hell, but there is no safe soul in heaven, neither is there any lost soul in hell. See the final resurrection of the dead. Everyone that died now, the spirit departs from the flesh. As God brought his, the, the spirit came from God, the flesh came from the earth, the spirit and the flesh come together, they form the third person to make one whole human being, the living soul. But when a man dies, the spirit departs from the body, the flesh becomes empty and useless as it were we are originally, back to the earth. No wonder I say nobody in that flesh can please God. 
Now, when that spirit returns to the flesh, to the to the to the to the ground, I mean to the flesh returns to the ground and the spirit back to God, the spirit stands either safe or condemned. Is either is going to be saved finally or condemned? Either the two now depend on what happened at resurrection. The spirit, if it is to be saved, will come back to pick the same body that died and become a soul again. Then go to be judged. That is what God will eventually judge. That's what Jesus said. I don't get everything and lose your soul. And if it is the one that will be condemned, it is a time you see come for the resurrection of the wicked. We are the spirit too that have gone somewhere now. In hell, just flying around there, we come back and unite with their own flesh too, and they shall eventually be judged. And that are the resurrection of the dead. That is what is waiting for everyone that is dead. That's why I say after death, the next thing is judgment. The judgment is to judge the soul that will come back after resurrection, either for the dead or for the living. That's another day. I can explain that to you later if uh, I need to. Now, after the heaven and the earth have been created. And God has ordered light to come into be. And the light has ordered all physical things, as you see it now, to be in place. It is the light that brings about the physical order we have now in the works of seven days, including the creating the physical man on the seas and the entry of the Spirit of God into that physical man on the seas and it becomes a living soul. All are the output of the light. All are the product of the light that come in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. It is part of this order that came from that light. When God said, let there be light that brought in the man, the part of God, which is spiritual himself, to join the physical man to become a living soul, as I have said to you, then the man becomes, it is so there, it is there for me, that man originally is a product of light and order. And that's why our light cannot be far from light. In fact, we pray that prayer a lot. So, in one lesson, you hear me. Until the light that brought you to make you what you are as a human being today is entered back into you, your life cannot make sense. Because man, by design, is a product of light and order. And that's why man can never function well in the dark. Man is not created to function in the dark. Man can never function well in the dark. Why? Because it's a product of light and only respond to light. Go back, go back to what we said, I think the first day, the second day, that said that Jesus Christ, he said, I'm the light, and that follow me cannot be in darkness. Therefore, if I'm a follower, my life must respond to his light. Because human be by nature, by creation, we are to respond to light. And the only light we respond to is the light that is in God. No sun, no moon. You see that the light that was in verse 3 was, has been there before God created the sun and the moon and the stars. So this is a light from God himself. The light that is under heaven, that is in heaven. This light in verse 3 has, is not the light of the sun or the moon or the star. It's the light that is in heaven. There is no sun or moon or star in heaven. They are ordered by the light that is in God himself. That light comes from God. And that's what you make yours a living soul. So man is a product of light and order. And man cannot do anything in the dark. Physically speaking too, we can't do anything in the dark because we must respond to light. That is how the physical man becomes an integral part of the order of God that is in the world. The physical world now. And that's why if you look at your own life, physically speaking now, we are going to go to the spiritual part now very soon. Physically speaking, now you look at your life, you notice or discover things are not in order. Some patterns are there, you don't like it. Some occurrences are there, you don't like it. I remember some time ago, many years now, about five years or so, I don't take things for granted. That's my nature. If anything repeats itself, it calls for actions, it calls for prayer. I've told you several times on this place that nothing repeats itself, not ordinarily. The Bible says affliction shall not rise the second time. Anything, especially if it's negative, if you come again second time, take it serious. I told you people you have a dream and you're having the same dream over and over again. Ask for questions. Ask for answers. Seek for counselors. 
And many people have been talking to me that God's grace, God will be helping us to do some little interpretations as God help us. If you have the same dream over and over again, go and see for counseling. Nothing in life happened by chance. The Pharaoh slept the night. He had a dream. The cow was swallowing, swallowing, swallowing the other one. And the same night, he slept again. Have a dream. The wheat we are swallowing the other one. Uh uh-uh. Double at the same time. And Jesus said that because this is double, it means it will not but come to pass. So whenever you have something that's happening in your life, and it's repeating itself more than once, more than once, it comes for your attention. I remember as I was saying the other day, and the other just now, about five years ago, many years ago, we were in Akure, newly came from, from Kano. There was no PPG then. We were in Akure, and I noticed every day I go to the organizer, it was a rainy period. My entire we pick nail, either the one in the front or the one at the back, they always pick something. And I was having punch shot tire every day, or at least two, three times in a week. And one day I come and say, say, if I continue like this, I will spend all my money on organizers. And it wasn't cheap. And I put, to, 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 I come, I called that car then, Joseph, you have sold it now. You have another one now, Adaza. I said, Joseph, for nine, for this is the last time you will pick nail. I don't have that kind of money. And do you know that was the last time that you said pick nail? The rain was still funny, but it wasn't picking nail with tire again. If I have taken it for granted, the devil will be looking at me, yes, if you can absorb this one, because 50 dollars it doesn't make sense. Okay, I will now bring a one, they will now bring a bigger problem that's bigger than 50 dollars for me to come to solve solving. If I can reject 50 dollars problem, I can reject that another problem too. That's how life is. So man become an integral part of physical life, the physical order. Everything that is disorder is never from God. God is not the author of confusion. God is the author of order. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion, but of order. So therefore, you must be very, very careful about physical life. Beginning from there, that was the first thing in Genesis. Everything that the first life in that chapter 3, chapter 1, verse 3, does in, on that was to bring about physical orderliness. And that was where we began from, that law, let your light shine into my life. First and foremost, to bring about physical order. Let everything about me be ordered by you. Let everything in me be ordered by you. Yes, people can be falling sick, don't worry about that. But if you become perennial, today, tomorrow, today, tomorrow, I'm falling sick regularly, then it calls for orderliness. That's first lesson must learn this night. And the way to do it is to say, let there be light. If you don't do it, don't expect results. That's part one. Then part two, then come the light of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible says, tell us in, uh, let me open a place for you to, let me open, uh, let, let me open a part of the scripture now. First, Luke chapter one. Quickly, let us see Luke chapter one. I read from verse 67 to 79. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He said himself, and he also, it was also said of him, even before he was born. Let's see Luke chapter 1. Let's see a testimony of a prophet here, even before Jesus Christ was born. Luke chapter 1. I read from verse number 67. Luke 1, 67. He says, and his father Zechariah, that was the father of John the Baptist when he was born, filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, remember when he was deaf and dumb? But when he was born, the man that couldn't speak for a long time suddenly began to speak. And he began to, when they mentioned the name of the son, his, the wife just said, his name is John. And the family are saying, ah, nobody answered that name in our family. Why should you? Because in the Jews' time, you only name his child, a son in particular, first son, after his own father. So they expect her to name her Zechariah. But the woman said, no, her name is John. And they asked the father, what's the name of your son? He narrowed it down, John. And the word, the name, their name, just the, the, the name the same. And immediately the man wrote that name down, his tongue broke loose, and he can speak again. That was the first miracle that happened at that man's bed and the naming ceremony. Then, immediately the, man, the mouth, man's mouth was loose. He began to prophesy. He said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, 
for he has visited and redeemed his people by his light. Say, Father, the mighty name of Jesus, tonight visit me and redeem me again and again by your light in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, visit me and my family and redeem us again and again by your light in the mighty name of Jesus. The light in Christ Jesus, let it redeem us, perfect redemption now in the mighty name of Jesus. Perfect redemption, perfect redemption in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. 69 says, And has raised us up and on of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the war began, that he should be saved from our enemies, from the hand of all that hate us. And after they confess it, God, the physical salvation has been there from Genesis chapter 1. God has been saving the world, physically speaking, and order it by his light from Genesis chapter 1. No wonder the Jews confused Jesus Christ as a physical savior when he come, when he came. Now, 72, he said, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the hope which he swore to our father Abraham. Then he will grant unto us that we be delivered out of the hand of our enemy, physically speaking now, my serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. That will be your experience in the mighty name of Jesus. We serve God without fear in holiness and in righteousness all the days of your life in Jesus' mighty name. From now and forth, by the raising of tonight's light, no one of us will be struggling, will be fighting, will be making it difficult and struggling to serve God any longer in the mighty name of Jesus, but in holiness and righteousness we serve him all our days and save our children too in Jesus' mighty name. And their children, children as well. Amen. 76. And thou shalt shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to repair his ways. That's a father prophesying to his own son, John. I pray, fathers here, we do that in our own life too in Jesus' mighty name. From time to time, prophesy to the life of your children and tell them what they will be and they shall be so in Jesus mighty name and the light to do that the grace to do that as a father here tonight receive it in the mighty name of Jesus 77 to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins that was his main reason he came through the tender mercies of our God whereby the day spring from our eye as you tell us, verse 79, love this verse. That's where we are going to, 79, say, to give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. That is the reason this light in the New Testament, Jesus Christ of Nazareth came to the world to give light to them that are in darkness, that sit in darkness. You look at your life, some things are disordered. You look at your family, some things are not right. You look at your 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 your, your entire being, some things are not just the way they're supposed to be. And you are look at it in physical perspectives. You can see the manifestations, but the solutions are not physical. You know it yourself. It go beyond just declaring the orderliness that comes from Genesis that 1 verse 3, that the light of Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 that brings physical orderliness is not solving this one. Then you may now have to go to the spiritual one now, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to him and that give light to them that sit in darkness and say, Father, in our house, it seems we are sitting in darkness. Blindness is there. Oh, Father, is in our house, it seems we are sitting in darkness. Sickness is always knocking on our door. Oh, Father, in our house, it seems we are sitting in darkness. Whenever there is accident, it seems we don't just escape it. There is always somebody crying somewhere. The leg is broken or the hand, or the, the ear is almost cut off. Oh, or you ask yourself, it seems that at such so time in my life, I notice the particular pattern that I am not interested in. And physically speaking, I've looked at it. I couldn't just help it. But now I've come to the light, to Jesus Christ that give light to them that sit in darkness. Now let there be light, the light of Jesus Christ, to bring light and life and all elements to this darkness of ours. That's the prayer we have to pray. 
But if you don't understand what I'm saying tonight, you might not be able to pray that prayer to auto. And therefore, to give light, when they sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, they are always be threatened by death. Children of God are never threatened by death. Oh, because I'm pregnant and something will not tell me that maybe I have a dream and say I will die. Who says so? The Bible says, who can say a thing and come to pass when God has not commanded it? Anybody can fall sick and sick and sickness can be very terrible, but that doesn't mean I will die. No. 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 Because it is not allowed I should sit in the shadow of death. The Bible says, my covenant with death shall be the son of. And my agreement with hell, with the grave, are cancelled, shall not stand. That is his promise for me. When I notice that somebody is harassing me with death, I report him and say, Father, it's as if a shadow of death is close, getting close to me. I declare, let there be light. And that light only comes through Jesus Christ. You say, Jesus Christ, I need your presence now. Maybe your presence is not as sharp as it ought to be. That's why I'm having bad dreams. Therefore, Lord, come into my life afresh. Let your presence be abide in me. Let there be light of Christ in me. When you say that, the shadow of death will disappear. Everything alive responds to his light. And there is nothing alive except the light of Jesus Christ is in it. Oh, I am a believer. Many believers are possessed with demons. Many believers are having terrible experiences they ought not to go through because they don't know that nothing is alive until the life of Jesus Christ has entered into it. And sometimes you must continually make demand, both from God and from yourself, and say, my life, God has shown his own light. You must order into it. Let that be the light in your life. Talk to yourself like that. And sometimes ask God, God, let your light shine in me. Let Jesus Christ be real in me. He said, as men that follow me, they will not be in darkness. They should not be in darkness. Darkness will have no place in me. That is the reason Jesus Christ came. If the light in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 can bring about physical orderliness, then the light of Jesus Christ that we know is greater and better and better should make a spiritual orderliness in our lives. But if you don't know this, it might be wasting our times. So, Jesus Christ came that those that are in darkness might see light. And those that are threatened by the death, they are in shadow of death, might escape it. And we guide our faith into the way of peace. God wants us to live in peace and at rest. And the only way we can do that is to order our life in his light. He order our life in his light. He give us light so that we can order our feet in the way of peace. Oh, the family is never having peace. Have you tried the light of Jesus Christ? Don't say I'm a believer. No. Many believers are suffering this. Don't say I'm a born again. No. Many believe born again Christians are suffering already. It's a difference. Say in the mighty name of Jesus. <coughs> it is written the light of Jesus Christ will bring about peace in my household. Why is it not like that? If it's not like that, I'd order it now in Jesus' mighty name. Then you begin to pursue peace. Brother Paul said, pursue peace. Pursue peace. Do the work of peace. And you will see peace. So Jesus Christ is the light in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, personified. The light now came in person. Not only to bring the physical order alone, but to bring about spiritual order as well. Because man can never live only in the physical. If it's a well-ordered life, but a bad spiritual life, it's nothing. A good spiritual life and, is, and the physical life is, is in jeopardy. It's of no use. God both must be balanced to make us the living soul God wants us to be. The light must come to a physical life to order it. And the life in Jesus Christ must also be in a spiritual life to order it. And we become the living soul God wants us to be. Only human beings have that privilege. Not even angels. Even God is only the spirit. And that Jesus Christ has to come to be in the flesh. And also to is a spirit. 
and by his experience, we can share the same experience in him. So in Jesus Christ, we are saved, we are restored to the life of God, and our lives should accordingly <coughs> respond to the light of God in Christ Jesus. And until we respond to that light in Jesus Christ, our life will be out of order. Our life will be out of order. A life without Jesus Christ or a relationship or a family without Jesus Christ is a life or is a relationship or is a family out of order. It's a confuse. It's a confusion. Because Jesus Christ is the light and without his light there can be no order. He said, let there be light. And there was light. And orderliness began to form. Everything that God said after that, after that was taking place, was taking shape, was forming order. So with that Jesus Christ, who is the light of God in our life, in our being, in our home, our life will be out of order. He may have done it yesterday, we are born again, and the team is working well. What about today? Have you gone back to Calvary and cried to him and said, Father, let my life be ordered by you. Turn him on less. The devil don't want to enjoy the peace in Jesus Christ by reason of his light. It is you that he said, no, I will enjoy it. Who told you that the devil wants your family to be in peace? Who told you that the devil wants my, my family to enjoy the peace of God? It is me that will say, no, I will have peace. My life must be ordered. Not only physically speaking, many of us have good job, have good things going physically, but spiritual life we are, dis we are disarray. Some have their spiritual life good, but physically they are disarray. In both cases, it's not the mind of God. The mind of God that physically and spiritually you are at peace. That makes you the living soul that God is looking for. God is after living souls. And that's why Jesus Christ came to make us a living soul. And our life must be ordered that way. If either of our physical or spiritual life suffer, the only way out of it, out of that suffering, out of that, when I mean suffer now, it means things are not in order. The patterns are not good. What we are seeing are bad. The only way out of it is to go back to the light that in Jesus Christ. There are parents that are suffering because their children are suffering. To them, everything is okay. But things are wrong with their children. You have to go back to the one that gave you the, them and say, Lord, let your light shine. How come the first son had this problem? Second son had this problem? Third son had this problem? Uh -uh, now only you. Go, go back to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, let there be light. Let there be orderliness. Come into our life. Come into my son. Come into my guest. Come into our being. Let there be orderliness. And we all need this the light in Genesis chapter 1, which is Jesus Christ, in physical orderliness and wisdom, and the light that is in the New Testament, which is the same Jesus Christ, in his spiritual wisdom, to be to order our life and to make us the balanced man that God wants us to be. And God is a balanced God. God is an ordered God. And the life of God's children must be ordered as well to make them live in soul. Physically, they are okay. Spiritually, they are okay. They are living so, serving their God. And you know what? The blessing of God upon a man is the amount of God's light they are sure upon him. You ask how I know. This way you can measure the blessing of God upon you. This way you can measure how far God is dealing with you, his mercy. This how to measure it is the amount of his light in your life. The amount of his light upon your family. The amount of his light upon your spouse, the amount of his light for your sake, keeping your children, the amount of his light upon everything that belongs to you. As small as the tire of your car is, you can command it. Be responding to the light of God in my life. And they will respond. How do I know this? The Bible says, and that's why I bless you every day in our, program, in our prayer, with this prayer, with this blessing. Because I'll be handing up with that. I know this when I was in the secondary school, because I can't remember now, but I was quite young. I came across these scriptures and that God said Moses to Aaron as a priest in the house. Moses was the leader of the house, physically the general of the house, but Aaron was the priest. And he said anytime the priest is to bless the children of God, 
This is how we bless them. And then I make a vow many years ago that if God allowed me to be a priest, a pastor, I never knew it to be like this. I was seeking to be a, a physical one over a church, physically speaking now. But God has brought me this part to him the glory forever in Jesus' mighty name. I'm not a pastor in any church. I'm only a pastor here. In my church, I'm just a member of privilege with my pastor to minister one or two times. But I'm here as a pastor. And I've told God then that any time I have the privilege of being a pastor, I'll be using this number 6, 24 to 27, as a blessing for my church. And I'll be doing that from day one we began this ministry. And I keep doing it as long as long God gave me life. I want the secret in that place is light. In 24, in number 624, number 624, it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Can you see light there? It means the amount of blessing of God upon you will be measured by the amount of light that comes from his face upon you. Say the Lord bless you and keep you. How will this happen if you, if you are using my own kind of Bible? You will see that in the front of that statement, the Lord bless you and keep you is a column. Which means the blessing and the keeping I'm talking about, this is how it is to be explained. This is how it is to be measured. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The amount of blessing you see in God's life is a measurement of the face of God that is shining upon your family. It is in disorder, man. Mommy, it shows that the amount of light you are receiving is either a small or it's reducing. Then you must have to go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, verse 3, and say, let there be light. And this time around, you are specific. Either it's physical one you want to be in order, or you want your kind to step in to make spiritual redefinition, spiritual redefining, spiritual reorganizations. Just as God physically reorganized the earth, He created it. Heaven and earth was created, but was confused. The earth was confused. God physically reorganized it for seven days. The same way you may need to call Jesus Christ, you created me a human being already. You make me a living soul, but I'm not actually a living soul the way it's supposed to be. Therefore, let Jesus Christ come spiritually now to reorder, to reorganize my life. That is why it is said that a man that is in Christ Jesus is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new because there is a reorganization. Before he was a very bad man, now he's a new man. Before he was a, a very wicked man, now he's a new man. Before he was a chief fornicator of the, of, of, the, of the city, now he's a new man. Before he was a man that cannot be trusted, now he's a new man. Before, when he lied, he doesn't even know that he lied. God lies part of himself. But now, if he lies, something is telling him that mm, 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 you are going there again, you are lying. Because now, he's a new man. If a man is in Christ Jesus, he's a new man. So you have to order that into your life. Say, God, let Jesus Christ come and make a spiritual reorderliness. And make me to enjoy the light upon your face. He say the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The amount of gracious grace you receive from God is directly depending on the amount of light that comes from his face. And that one to have column in the front. 26 now says, The Lord lit up his countenance upon thee. Going repeating the same statement again. I told you. Once something is repeated twice, God is calling for attention. God said, my face will shine upon you. And the next statement again, he repeated it in another way. He said, my countenance, you see my face. My face, my countenance, my very being, my entire being, we radiate over you and give you peace. What else do we want in life? No wonder there is no peace. There is no peace because our physical life are disordered. There is no peace because our spiritual life too is not making sense. Until both are sensible, because they are depending on the amount of light we are receiving from God, we cannot enjoy the perfect peace we're supposed to enjoy. Let your, my faith be upon you, and I be gracious to you, because I shine up my peace on you, and my countenance be upon thee, and give you peace. And I say, and they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, 
and I will bless them. And that's why I also pray every night that may God put his name upon our children and bless them. All are because of the amount of light I know we are receiving each time we pray. And that testament was that my wife has said it here before that there was a time time we finished praying like this, we see angel in her in her sleep. Not even her sleep as per se, just as we finish praying, and it'll be sinking with us. And several like that I've seen myself. Several. So therefore, we are receiving his light. And if our light individually now is not reflecting that light, we need to go back to him. There's no shame about it. If God made the heaven and the earth and the earth is still void, then you have to make all physical adjustment. The same way, if God make you and me living so and our life is still empty, we can go to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, make a spiritual adjustment. And let there be light. And there will be light. And the better the Lord did that, the earlier, the better for us. And our old life we order by, by Him. If your life, or my life, if your family, or my family, if your relationship, or my relationship, if anything about you that is God has been, that's supposed to be a blessing for you is out of order, it might be because enough of God's light is not falling on it. Or none is even falling at all. Or it's falling maybe in small, small measure. Now is the time to go and check and pray about it. Anyway, you are, you just lift up, lift up your hand and say, Father, let there be light in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the light shine in my physical life and reorder it. Everything responds to light. Let my life respond to your light. And let the light shine in my spiritual life too. And let it respond to it. Everything alive responds to the light of God in Christ Jesus. If I am alive indeed, then my life should respond to Jesus Christ. And that's, that way I will be a living soul that I ought to be. So I'm Let there be light. Let there be light. I believe you are praying for yourself. Let there be light. Shine forth your light into my life, into my matter, into my children case. Oh, do your children love God? Are they even willing to serve God? How about your family? Are you the only one doing all the service, the spiritual things here? How about others? Law enough, enough. I didn't know I didn't receive enough of your life. I was thinking once I'm born again, that's the end. No, sometimes you need to continue to ask. Lord, can I ask? Come into my life and make a, a readjustment. Seven days you readjusted the earth and you recreated everything. Lord, for tonight, let me experience the Bible safe in mind, in Christ of all things that pass away. Behold, it's a new creature. Let my life experience newness in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let me experience newness. Send forth your light. Send forth your light. Send forth your light. Every just part of me, everything I don't like, every negative patterns, every demonic satanic patterns, every dream repeating themselves, and I don't want them to come to pass in my life. Lord, I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, let there be light. Let there be light. Every pattern I've noticed in my own family, in my own life, and are not according to your will. Daddy, let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. I know you are praying for yourself too. Let there be light. Let there be light. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be light. The Bible says Jesus Christ, who oh, is the light to them that sit in darkness. Lord, in everywhere I am sitting in darkness, I say, let there be light. Let Jesus Christ shine forth his face and his light into me. In every way, darkness and death is strengthening me. Who oh, say I will not carry my own baby? Who oh, say I will not live to, to see my own children and children and, and, and grandchildren? Who oh, say I will die young like my parents before me? No, that is not my lot. Who oh, say I will not live my life in good health? Who oh, say my, I, will not, I will not enjoy my family? Who oh, say my, I will not live the labor of my own hands? Who oh, say I cannot be a true Christian? Who oh, say I cannot live a life without sin? Who oh, say I cannot live a faithful Christian life? Who oh, say so? Lord, reorder it. Reorder them. You are the one that reorder everything. Anywhere I'm sitting in the shadow of death. Anywhere darkness is raining in me. Let there be light in the mighty name of Jesus. Anywhere my feet is not going the way of peace. Anywhere my family is not going the way of peace. Let there be light, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
the Bible says that there is life in Jesus Christ. And every living, every living soul responds to that light. If I be alive in you, let my life, let my soul, let my spirit, let my body, let everything about me respond to the light in Jesus Christ. Let there be light in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. Hallelujah be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you, Father. Jesus Christ says, on this Monday we should pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Father, tonight we say, hallowed be your name. Hallowed be your name. And the Father, he said, that we should pray, that as it is in heaven, so it should be on earth. In our lives, in our families, in the life of our children, in the properties we have been blessed with, in our bed, in our bedrooms, in our incomes, in our spiritual life, in everything good for life and godliness that God has blessed us with. The Bible says it is in heaven, so it should be on earth. Father, I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Heaven are ordered by light. Everything in heaven is in order because the light of God reigns over all. Father, tonight I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, the light of God in Christ Jesus. Enter into every home now. The light of God in Christ Jesus. Enter into families now. The light of God in Christ Jesus. Enter to every health issue now. The light of God in Christ Jesus. Enter to every parenting effort now. Every parent struggling to parent their children. The light of God in Christ Jesus. Enter into every economic and financial difficulties now. The light of God in Christ Jesus. Enter to every pattern, negative pattern, demonic pattern, dreams repeated and said that you did not sense. The light of God in Christ Jesus. Enter into every statement that coming to pass. And God has not spoken them. Spoke, has, God has not spoken about them or talk to them or declare them. It is written here, can it, how can say it and come to pass when God has not said it? Lord, everything coming to pass in every home, in every family, that you have not ordered. The light of God in Christ Jesus entered to those homes now. Every spiritual manipulations, every sinful habit, every inability to serve God, every... He said, my heart panted out of the water booth. As the heart panted out of the heart panted out of the water booth, so my heart panted out of you. Every heart that is not panting out of God. Every heart that hates God secretly. Even when we say we are believers, but secretly we hate God. We don't like listening to His word. We don't like doing His will. Secretly we have hatred for Him. Every heart like that. In Jesus' mighty name, either in us as parents, or in our children, or in us as young men and women, not even married, every desire for self and for godliness, the light of God in Christ Jesus, enter now. It is written, if Jesus Christ entered to that heart, that the heart is a new creature, the light is a new creature, all things have passed away, all things have become new. I command the scriptures according to just 2 Corinthians 5.17 to be effective now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the light of Jesus Christ enter to our homes and cause both physical readjustment and orderliness and spiritual readjustment and orderliness and make us the living soul that we ought to be in God in Jesus' mighty name. Let it happen now. Let it take place now. The light of God in Christ Jesus, take over now. Take charge now. Everyone that hear this voice, we never again in this or our life recover from this prayer. This is because the light of God in Christ Jesus enters to you now, from your hearing, to your spirit, to your soul, to your body, to every health challenges. The light of God in Christ Jesus enter now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Spread the divide. Thank you. This is your will. This is your mind. And it is written that if we pray according to your will and your mind, we should rejoice that you have done it. Thank you because this is your will. And it's your will, I declare again and say, let there be light. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. I believe you are blessed tonight. God bless you and under your life by light in Jesus' mighty name. I'm excited. I'm happy that you are here. God bless you. The meeting is over. And uh, by God's grace, we are going to have the one of August, the same time next in August. And um, we are trusting God to be a major change in our, what do we call it, in our big events. I'm not even discovered this with my wife. I'm seeing it live from here. I'm just seeing it the way I'm doing it. I will discuss the modality with you as the Lord discussing with me by His grace. I'm trusting God to be wonderful again. This, by this August, will mark the five years of this journey. Thank you for joining with me. And I'm blessed to have joined with you. I'm truly blessed to have joined with you. There are places here, there are names I'm seeing now that we have been on this journey for five years together. You will not miss your reward in Jesus' name. And those that join us on the line, God bless you. Continue with us. You will not miss your reward in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you and honor you in Jesus' name. All your support in tithe and offering, in saying thank you, Pastor, to me too. Sometimes somebody who send credit, I don't know who they are. They send their credit, phone call credit. I'm calling today because we are all here. I call from, from all the support from you, from my wife's tithe, from your tithe. I make all that we are doing. We bless other lives. Because you are supporting us, heaven will shine lights upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for praying for me. I've seen tests. I've seen a call. People have been talking to me since yesterday. God bless you so much. God bless all of you. And from now and forth, more than ever before, you will see more of light, more of God's light in your house and your family in Jesus' name. May God keep us together in love and bind us in love. Please remember, August, we are going to visit our, any of the homes. Send forth enough. If we have enough, it may even help us to reach out to others too to, in the August 20 meeting we are having. If it's not enough, anything we have, just send to a particular house alone. Then, on the, by August, I think the last week of August or so, we be having this, the discussion, our lecture here, by God's grace. I'm trusting God will help us to do that too, so that we can talk more about parenting and see our roles. And may God shine light on our parenting efforts as well in Jesus' mighty name. In this economic hardship that the world is, and Nigeria in particular, God will shine light upon your income. Serving God will not be difficult for you in Jesus' mighty name. And your tithe and offering of the past, heaven will reward you in abundance in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. And please, if you have enough to support us for the program you are having on uh, August 20 in Badan here, to be a blessing to families and to home. Thank you for coming. May you see more of light in Jesus' mighty name. Right, Thomas, I am you. Eri Moleu. Eri Moleu. Eri Moleu. Not that I make you afraid. In Jesus' mighty name, we are afraid. May God bless you and keep you. May God shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May God lead all peace continents upon you in accordance as we have discussed tonight and be gracious to you and bless you and put his name upon you and upon your children and bless them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of this family, family of God, strong as David, wise as Solomon, joint here, Jesus. Just here in Jesus, heaven home abound. I'm so glad with this family. Family of God. Please don't forget, God is interested in your physical life. The light in Genesis 1 verse 3 is sought to other physical rearrangements. And that's what we have today. God can order our physical life and erase every negative, negative pattern. And the light in Christ Jesus that he came in person to bring to those of us in darkness, especially in darkness of continent Africa here and all over the world, the same darkness, that the light in Christ Jesus will bring about a spiritual readjustment and order into our spiritual life, thereby making us a complete human being, a living soul that God wants us to be in our homes. May we see that light and explain that life on nine spots as we keep declaring and now speak to our own life based on this understanding of we have Lord has made to see tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, God bless you in Jesus' name. And because it's a year of amen, please, young one, 
you are marrying one, I trust God to order your life in his life and make you have a family, peaceful family in Jesus' mighty name. Our pregnant women, God bless you. No fear, you will deliver your baby, that's for sure. And be alive in Jesus' mighty name. And because the year of Amen, what do we say? Amen is my pan. Amen is my son. With Amen, I get victory in prayer. Amen is my sword. Whenever I say Amen, in the name of all for name, demons tremble and God is glorified. Amen is my stay. There's power in Amen. Amen is a light in darkness. Amen is a light in John chapter 1 verse 3. And Amen is Jesus Christ himself. When you say Amen, there's light in your darkness. And I say Amen again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. It is over. Whenever I say Amen, in the name of all for name, Demons tremble and God is glorified. Amen. His majesty. Amen.